it feels really weird picking up the camera after such a long time between filming that you just forget how to do things. That's kind of how I'm feeling. So getting back into the swing of things once again after a long break and well, it's certainly been a long one and I'm still not back into it perfectly yet. There's reasons behind it. The house is still kind of a cluster and there's still some crap going on and it's just not film worthy if you know what I mean. So I hope that this is going to be something to suffice for the time being, and perhaps maybe we'll bring a different format of content to the channel, at least going into the future for some videos, and that way we can uh, spruce things back up again. That's basically what I'm going for with this. So you might have noticed this is my main computer. This is my AM5 PC, Ryzen 7 7800X 3D, 32 gigs of DDR5, and a Radeon RX 7900 XT PowerColor Hellhound Edition. And you might have noticed down here in one of the PCIe slots, something that is branded Elgato. Yep, I have made the worthwhile investment, well, I hope it's worthwhile investment, to get a capture card. Finally, something that I can use to capture stuff from these computers I have and hopefully not have to deal with more patterns on the screen while I'm doing so. I guess you could say this is years in the making, but that's not really true, and it's not really putting it in a good way, so I'm not going to say that any farther. But alas, we finally have some kind of a capture card. Now, the one I've got here is the Elgato 4K60 Pro Mark II. I got this secondhand, of course, like a lot of things I get secondhand, so I got a significant discount off of what these normally MSRP at, which is that. So quite a cost savings. And I'm hoping that even though this might not be the most ideal solution for the things that I'd like to do, it will hopefully do the job for the things that I can do with it. And I'll have to probably get some extra equipment. So I'll probably ramble on about it a little bit here, but suffice to say, I have something of a capture card and that's what's important. So I've been playing around with it for a little while. I don't have all the proper equipment and adapters and such to make this the most perfect setup. And ideally long term, I'd like to make some kind of a dedicated computer box just for capturing and recording, just to kind of act as a DVR, if you will. And maybe that'll come in the future. But for right now, I'm just using my main computer and just using it as an internal pass through to my monitor. So that way I can play around with different formats and devices and see what it works with. It's definitely not perfect. The Elgato software is, well, kind of finicky but it works enough to where I think I can probably make modern devices work well enough to get the job done. And I'll demonstrate it here after a little bit to show you all what I mean. But yeah, for older things, that's where this thing starts to kind of work and kind of fall apart at the same time. So let me explain that. So basically, I tried using my Athlon XP computer, which I was going to use for a remake series. Well, actually, it's technically be a new series, but I'm going to try it in a new format where I look at the old Windows Longhorn builds. And I figured I'd want to capture that with a capture card so that way I don't have to deal with more A patterns on the screen because I did actually try to do that previously. I got this 16-inch Acer VGA LCD and it works great for this sort of purpose. And it has a nice 4x3 clean output at 1024 by 768 It looks fantastic. But the problem is... When I face my iPhone 15 Pro Max camera at this screen, you're more than likely going to get more A patterns more often than you do a clean picture. And that's where this thing comes into play. So I did try to experiment with using that PC, which has a uh, ATI Radeon 9800 Pro video card, which will be crucial in playing a, a very important role with that uh, video series, with that computer. But I'll obviously note that in that series, but some people will probably already know where that's going. And I have a DVI to HDMI converter. Now it does work with the 4K60 Pro to a certain extent. The software just likes to be picky with what it outputs. So it doesn't like certain refresh rates like BIOS screens might put out or boot screens that have really funky, weird resolutions like the Windows XP boot screen, for example. So it's just strange in the way that it accepts inputs. It's very much touchy. And I'm not surprised in the slightest that that's the case. A lot of these BIOS setups have weird resolutions or refresh rates or such, especially older hardware. 
And so a CRT would probably handle that stuff just fine, or a more modern LCD with an advanced controller can probably pick up on those things just fine, but obviously not a direct input to a capture card because I would expect that it would expect a fixed input like uh, HD resolution at 60 hertz or something like that. So I think what I'm going to need to do for a future investment, let's just say, I need to get a scan converter. I think that's probably going to fix my issues here in something that's going to take VGA, maybe composite and component, and of course an HDMI pass-through, all of which is going to cost extra money, obviously. But what I'm hoping is that it'll allow me to uh, capture those older devices with hopefully good enough quality and not a huge amount of latency. The biggest thing for me is with at least this 4K60 Pro, having that pass through to an additional display will help at least a little bit, but I'll have to see how that works. I've not actually played with the pass through yet to see how the input latency is. I would expect that there's basically a very, very tiny amount considering that the uh, the capture card has to do some kind of processing obviously but maybe that's just on the computer side and i'm just assuming that the pass through is going to have that additional latency it might just be fine it might be perfectly one-to-one because -one um, the pass through is just a pass through so i'll have to try that but like i said at the very least i've got something to work with and it should hopefully do at least some kind of good for the channel even if it's just for modern devices that's still better than having nothing in my opinion so what I'm going to do now, I'm going to fire up the PC. I'm going to get my monitor put back down here for one thing. I put the side panel back on. And I'll see if I can try to plug in a couple of things, maybe see if I can demonstrate something. And we'll keep this video somewhat short, sweet, to the point. So this is just going to be a very rudimentary demonstration of the capture card today. Obviously, you won't see stuff behind the scenes like this when a normal video comes out. At least that's what I'm hoping. So for the sake of just showing that it works today, I've got this Gigabyte Aorus 15 laptop with an i5-13500H and RTX 4050, just for the sake of showing that it works. So a more modern device, obviously. This will work just fine, direct HDMI to HDMI. So obviously this needs no introduction if I go to the Elgato software here on the PC. And once it initializes, as you can see, Bada boom, works just fine, no issues to report there. So that's all great, and that's working. I have needed to do another investment because the cable I'm using for HDMI, I don't think is HDMI 2.0 spec because it tends to have issues with higher refresh rates. I think it's just HDMI 1.4. So that's a bit of a bummer, but again, that's on me. I need to invest in a higher spec HDMI cable going into the future, which that's cheap. I can do that. But as you can see, here we are, it's working. And now let me go open up a game real quick. Mm hmm. I see. All right, it is now testing time. So I'm just recording from OBS using the capture card as the output here. So I just got GTA 5 running on this laptop. And so free uh, settings junkies out there, we're just using 1080p. And I had to force it to 60 Hertz because obviously the capture card had a bit of a stroke as I had it apparently set to 144 because of the internal laptop display. And it just did not like that. So again, I think that's got something to do with my cable. So. I'll have to play with that. Anyway, um, I don't have MSAA on at the moment, although it probably would benefit to have it on, but you can see all the maximum settings except for post effects, which is set to normal, and grass quality, which is set to high. These are like the crisp uh, settings for GTA 5 for uh, quality and performance reasons. And everything over here is off. I'm gonna make sure high detail stream while flying is also turned off just because normally that's more GPU bound, but that could be CPU bound because I have to load in assets. So anyway, uh, let's just see what happens when we go into offline here and have a little bit of fun goofing around and then perhaps maybe I'll go on, uh, online later, but not on the video, obviously. All right, and here we go. So I'm going to focus on the laptop screen so that way it will actually not give me a finish trying to watch me put delayed recordings here. It's mostly just be a sound test to see if the sound's coming in properly. I can drive.
Chris would usually say, Hello, Jack, how's it going? Although I'm not here, honestly. And... Unsupported CPU detected. Well, I'll have you know, I think a 13th gen i5-13500H is plenty enough CPU for this game. Unless you want a 6-core for P-cores, then, you know, whatever. But, you know what I think about that? That's what I think about that. The application is not responding. The program may respond again if you wait. See, look, I didn't even have to do anything. It's easy. Now, this game just likes to have issues... <laughs> Alright, we're now in the game properly this time without it crashing, and I'm going to pick 1080p using the medium settings, and I'm honestly going to turn off DLSS entirely. And I think what I'm going to do is tell the performance target to be unlocked with VSync, and let's just let it figure it out. Let's just do that. Oh, I should probably set these back to auto. Set everything back to auto, because otherwise this game's probably going to... Yeah, it's starting to stutter in the menu, and that's an NVIDIA issue with this game, which really irks the crap out of me that they don't fix this stupid game, but that'll probably be adding fuel to an already overwhelming fire, so I just as well... Oh yeah, motion blur off, we'll do that. There we go, that's tolerable. Okay, finally loaded. Let's see how this does. So I think that's pretty much going to be it for this video anyway. I didn't mean to make it too terribly long, but this is just me playing around with the capture card, which I've been meaning to do now more thoroughly for quite a while. So I feel like in time, I'll probably get better with the settings, especially the audio, and I'll figure that stuff out. It was just mostly me goofing around today, so it's going to be a little bit of cringe, I know, but that's all right. So hopefully in the future, you'll enjoy the future productions that involve the capture card and Hopefully I'll figure out the audio situation. I might have to do something a little bit more custom with like a um, like a DAC or something externally. So that way I can input the audio and then have something connected to that. So that way there's no latency between the video and the, um, the audio, you know, being out of sync and such. So that'll all be stuff I'll figure out in the future. But at least for now, it is what it is. So if you like what you saw today, and I know it wasn't much, but if you still liked it anyway, well then you know what to press and... Get subscribed down below if you want to continue to see me play around with this thing some more, because I do upload rather infrequently, but hopefully we'll figure something out. And with that, I think our little video here is done today, so thank you all for coming to watch, and I'll hopefully see you all in the not-too-distant future.